Been looking forward to this day, guys. Today we're finally gonna get started on the rescape of the Big Shallow. I can't believe that this tank has been here for over a year already. I got it last year on the middle of May. And I've planted it somewhere at the end of May, beginning of June. It's now half June, so yeah, just over a year. Now also in the past year, I got a lot of new subscribers. So if you have been subscribed for the past six months, you probably haven't seen much of this tank at all. So I think it's good we do a little recap first. So I was looking to upgrade to something bigger for a while because basically since I started aquascaping, I had only done relatively small tanks. But because we live in an apartment, I was a little bit worried about the weight of a big tank. So I didn't want to go too big as well. So when I saw the opportunity to get this 120 cm shallow tank, I just straight away went for it. I also managed to get my hands on some beautiful rocks. So at the time I was really captured by the idea of having a shallow Iwagumi. It took me quite a while to make a decent looking composition with the rocks and it definitely became clear why I like small tanks so much. They're just much easier to escape. After a few days I had a rock formation that I was pretty happy about, so it was time to get the plants. And I basically went for a nice carpet of colossal stigma in front, different sizes of hair grass in the back and some crypts around the rocks. After the tank was planted and cycled it was time to add the fish and I decided to start with a group of pygmy quarries and a group of goldwing daniels. The tank was doing pretty good up until this point, but it wasn't completely stable and balanced just yet. And when I came back from Holace, we had a lot of algae, including blue-green algae. Long story short, I did a blackout to get rid of the algae, which worked really well. And after that, I also added some new plants to change up the look a little bit. I think in the beginning of this year, the tank looked at its best. But soon after that, the idea of creating a new layout started to creep in. So in March or April, I made the decision to you know, start with something new and I removed the CO2 and stopped trimming the plants. And for the past two months, I only did a few water changes. So overall, I really enjoyed this thing. It was definitely a challenge to keep it stable and I learned a lot from it as well. But now it's time to do better with version two. So I'm sure you can imagine how excited I am to get started with this build. I have some really cool ideas for it. I have some really beautiful hardscape for it, but I definitely want to take my time with this one. I think the previous layout on here was a bit too rushed and the end result was just a bit mediocre, you know? This time we just have to take our time and this has to just become like the sickest shallow tank I've ever seen. So I think this, we'll just split this up into separate episodes. So right now taking it down will be one episode, then the hardscape will be a separate episode, then the planting and then getting the fish. So it will probably be a while before we will see this finished, but I just I can't wait for that day to come. Okay, so how do we go about taking down a big tank like this? So I want to start completely from scratch. So literally everything is coming out. I want to clean the tank like and then make it look like it's new again. So I think the best way to go about this is to first start with removing the hardscape. So we have some really big rocks in here that are super heavy. So we will remove that first. Uh, once that's done, we can uh, we can remove the plants. Kind of check what we want to keep, what we can reuse. For example, we still have some very nice uh, Boussafalandras in here. We have some really nice moss in here. And I'm also doing a few smaller projects in the meantime, so we can definitely reuse some of these plants. Now, once we remove the plants, it's probably going to be a big mess in here. So then we'll wait for the filter to kind of clear up the water again. Then we can catch the fish. And once all the fish are caught, we can remove all the substrate, clean everything, and then we're basically done. It's going to take a few hours, but yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, here we go. After I pick up these rocks, there is no going back anymore. So let's just get this over with. Oh, that's heavy. Let's do the other one as well. This one's a little bit lighter. Look at how much the water level dropped just from removing those two rocks. The actual water volume in here is not that big, it's only like 180 liters and I mean with all the hardscape with all the substrate I think we have like maybe 140 liters left now both these rocks are literally like completely covered in black brush algae and that was another reason why I kind of stopped enjoying this tank so much I really struggled to maintain the CO2 levels in here because it's a shallow tank and because we still have quite a large surface area so it's 120 by 50 centimeters so we have a very large surface area and comparing to the actual volume of the tank so we get a lot of water evaporation as well. And with that, we also lose a lot of CO2. So I was really struggling to maintain the CO2 levels in here, which led to some, uh, yeah, some algae issues. 
So actually for the next setup, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using CO2 in here. So we still have quite a lot of fish in here as well. So we have about 10, 15 of the Ember Tetras. We have a lot of the Endler Guppies. And we have a lot of Corys as well. I think they're all kind of chilling in the middle section over there. So in order to catch all of them, we just have to get everything out. Always a, a bit of a mess to take down the tank, but it is what it is, part of the hobby. In this bucket right here, we have most of the plants. These plants right here, we have to just sort out, see what we want to keep. Over here on this side of the room, I just set up a small tank with plants that I definitely want to keep. So we have a be some beautiful Madagascar lace plants. We have some uh, small lilies, uh, some other things, some beautiful Busa Flanderas and Busa Flandera moss. So this will be like a temporary setup for the uh, for the guppies. The guppies are going to a new setup that I'm working on. It's going to be outside, super exciting. So they will be stay, staying temporarily in here. And I think the rest of the fish, the ember tetras and the corys, they will be uh, currently staying in these two tanks. Okay, so catching fish is always a little bit stressful, right? I mean, it's stressful for the fish. But it's also stressful for us because it's difficult. It takes a long time. Fish are always like scared and like we don't want to hurt them. So here's a few tips. First of all, I always like to move the substrate towards the back. This way we can kind of drain the water level and that way we force the fish to come to all the way to the front. So now all the fish and shrimp are over here in the front. Some of them are over there on the side. It just makes it a lot easier to catch them. Um, another tip is to, if you're draining the water and you're using a manual siphon like I am, just put the siphon in a little bit of filter floss. This way we can get all the way down low without having to worry that we're going to be siphoning out fish or shrimp. So it's like super safe. And yeah, always make sure also that you have some clean water. Right now the water is super dirty. So I still have some clean water safe from before the water was dirty. Now we can start catching fish. Definitely not making it easy for myself by trying to separate everything, but I managed to catch all the ember tetras. <laughs> they were easy because they have the most color in this uh, muddy water. So we can transfer that one to the 70 liter scapers tank and then we can continue catching the rest. I think the most difficult task is done. I managed to catch all the pygmy cores as well. These guys are super fast and super difficult to spot in this dirty water. But I think I've man finally managed to catch all of them and they will go in the 45p together with the green neon at Boras. Okay, so maybe it's not brand new clean, but it's clean enough for me. That's the job. So yesterday, oh, it was actually the day before yesterday already. The day before yesterday, I just moved all the substrate, uh, cleaned all that dirty water, siphoned out all the dirty water, cleaned the glass, and now we're here. Okay, don't pay attention to the outfit. I just want to wrap this video up and give you guys a quick uh, preview of the new hardscape. So I mentioned that version one was a bit mediocre and version two has to become like the sickest shallow tank ever. So I was looking for some really unique hardscape and I think I found it. Some of my subscribers might remember my trip last year to Barcelona to visit Wio. Wio is a hardscape company. Well, they, they do more than just hardscape, but they really have some crazy hardscape that you don't really see anywhere else. So when I went to visit them, they also had two shallow tanks in their office space and I was really inspired by that. Long story short, Wio is sponsoring the hardscape for V2 of the Big Shallow, super exciting. And that stuff actually arrived last week. Okay, so a bit of a surprise delivery this morning. I knew something was coming this week. I just didn't know exactly when. So when this big truck just pulled up on the house, I was like, okay, maybe it's here. So this big truck just pulled up. 
and brought a nice delivery. Yeah, some substrate in here. We have a bunch of rocks here. And then all the boxes kind of fell apart. So we have wood here as well. Yeah, a lot of new things. Hey, what's, the, what's all this mess? <laughs> so this is like the, the main piece that I got. This is called Centurion wood. Never seen this before anywhere else. So I think it's really cool. I'm not sure yet if this is going to be the position, but I want it to be, of course, come out of the water. So it's either going to be from this side or from the other side. Let me know in the comments what you think is best if you have it coming out high over there towards the shelf or maybe it should come high out over there towards the other side of the wall. So I just wanted to show you guys this massive piece as a bit of a preview of what's to come in the next episode. I have some smaller pieces as well. I have some new rocks, some new substrate. So we're definitely going to be able to create something cool with this. I'm super excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this yet. And see you next time. Take care.